Delegate Wu and then Delegate Bernice Muir Q North. Thank you, Madam Chair. For Delegate uh, Block Fitchcar, so I pronounce your name correct. <laughs> and so I have a question for you. So when you put like single family $250,000 and the why for the like, double family, it's not a Four hundred thousand dollars or half a million dollars just times two. Why you put a three hundred thousand dollars? So that is the the income thresholds in the bill are tied to what the top income brackets are at the state level currently. So that's why we chose two fifty and three hundred. Because like for a lot of double earners, probably all of them probably hit that threshold of three hundred thousand dollars for a lot of middle class families. That's what I'm thinking, right? So, I can just add some context because this came up on another bill in the revenue subcommittee today. Um, the $250,000 joint filing mark is the the 90 something percentile. So it, it is already the upper, very upper echelons in terms mm -hmm. of incomes in Maryland. There are not many people who are who are above that. Yeah, for single filer, I think that's pretty high. But for a family, like two double earning, right? That is 300,000 pretty, pretty low. That's so that actually, the statistic I just said is for, for joint filers. I'll follow up. I'll share the information from the comptroller's office with you. I see. Thank you. So, and, it, mm -hmm. and it's taxable income. So after deduction, so you could be making more than that. Um, okay. Yeah. So, so for county executive, I have a question for you. I remember the Montgomery County raised the tax rate recently, right? So I, I, I really support how we, we need to get more revenue for the education. Thanks for MAPE coming here. Like whenever we raise revenue because we said we fund education for more funding. However, a lot of situations, we raise $10 million, probably only $1 million goes to education. Is there any mechanism say we raise the revenue because we want to fund education, but actually we put maybe 50% or 80% that extra revenue go to education. Is there any mechanism somewhere? You know, <clears throat> taxes don't come with handcuffs. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's hard to like say absolutely, but I know what we were faced with and what the budget increase from the school was. Mm -hmm. And the only way we were going to raise the revenue over last year's request from the school was to do this. And mm -hmm. it was largely um, focused on teacher pay. Sure. And, you know, but I will say that, you know, there are other things we'd like to do. We are struggling to build the transportation system that makes us competitive with Virginia, partly because of the way all the other taxes are structured. You know, so things that our ability to raise money also increases our ability to attract businesses, to invest in life sciences, to do incubators, mm -hmm. to do the kind of things we know we need to do if we're going to build a business space that ultimately would let us share the revenues a little bit more broadly. Um, so we're looking at all the tools. You you will see from us a request for local taxing authority on transportation because that's what, one of the things that Virginia has that we don't have that has enabled them to build things we would only dream about. I can't even come close to what they invest. So if you want us to be economically successful, mm -hmm. and I don't, I like the fact that Montgomery County's revenues can help drive possibilities in other jurisdictions around the state, but we can only do that if we're able to build an infrastructure and support a school system that makes us a place that people want to come to. So I look at this as, this is truly investments. Nobody's making money on this. I, I think I share that sentiment, right? So I think the question is, in a lot of cases, we raise tax because we, we want to support education. That's always behind that, I would say, the desire to support that. And at the same time, for many counties, I look at their revenue share go to education, that percentage didn't go up. Like every year, sometimes I see the rate of revenue, but that another proportionally goes into education. That's a concern, right? I'm afraid we, I want to fear there should be some mechanism say, okay, we, we want to raise family support education, but we want to get a little higher share of that extra revenue goes into education. So Is there any mechanism can, can we like change that from so, county executive side? So I, we're, you know, we're, Stuart and I are part of the MAKO group, and we have Ken, mm -hmm. Ken Kevin here representing the, us. But this, he's representing the MAKO position because it was a bipartisan position. And everybody there, we were not the only jurisdictions hit by, by the blueprint. Everybody knows this mm -hmm. is coming. Everybody, the 13 counties are already in the box or they'll wind up in the box they were in. 
and everybody needs more flexibility. So these things are coming because I think regardless of political party, there's a recognition that the flexibility is a good thing and the reliance on property taxes alone is not a good thing. Thank you.